It's a disco-themed Bachelorette weekend for episode five. We have Botox, a juice clan, and our first ever stripper. We are so excited to talk to you guys right now. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Oh, I was going to... Yes, Ooh, the yeah. lights. I wish it was Saturday. Da, da, da. Just looking forward to the weekend because we're trying to stay alive. <laughs> Literally ooh, trying to stay ooh, alive. Ooh, ooh. Hey guys, how's oh it going? God. Party! It's episode five for Bachelorette Weekend. I'm your host, Sarah Serio, and to my left, I have Caroline Bear. Perfect. Staying alive. How are you guys doing? Comment. You just saw us if you were tuned yeah. in before. Um, we are talking the latest Bachelorette Weekend episode, and I'm pretty excited because this was a good one compared to last week's, which was an epic fail, and we'll never talk about it again, so we're going to move to the positivity. <sighs> Caroline, what are your thoughts? Okay, um, and I mentioned this in our last episode, I felt like these girls <laughs> had the best Bachelorette Weekend yet had the smallest budget, which shows you can make the most of your experience um, and you don't need to, you know, like go all out. But I also think that the batch team compensated for that Mm -hmm. by paying for a lot of the services or like kind of working Mm -hmm. deals out. So I don't know. I just, that rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. And also the fact that they lived in Nashville, where the rest of them always traveled to Nashville, and they're, like, local, so it's like they know everything, and it's just, like, they didn't, you know, they still, I feel like, were the most humble of all of the bridal people we've seen. They also seemed like they were, like, really close. Yeah, Do you ever feel like sometimes with the bigger bridal parties, they're friends from different walks of life? I feel like that'll be what my bridal party is, you know? (laughs) Like, it's, like, friends from college versus friends from high school, um, and they don't necessarily know each other that well. It felt like this group was really Mm close-knit. However, I will say, and I'm sorry, like, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but I was not a fan of Jessica. From... The uh, maid of honor, mm-hmm. not a fan. I mean, everything t- was about her. Yeah, I feel oh like a goodness. lot of maid of honors try to do that. It is not your day, honey. Your day will maybe come. Maybe you, you'll be like a twenty-seven dresses situation, but it's not your day. <laughs> Don't steal the spotlight from your best friend. I feel like some maid of honors do that because they just want to like make the bride super happy, and it's like. I get that, but it's also like you need to realize what she wants. And if she specifically said, which we'll get to, no, no she stripper. doesn't want something, then like just don't do it. Okay, okay but th- this is where I agree with that statement. But Jessica said a little something for me in um, like to Nicole, I think. At the beginning. At the beginning, yeah. which in no way, shape, or form is her looking out for her. Bri- sure. the bride it's no, literally I her can, looking out for herself yeah. and i don't know maybe it maybe the stripper thing it seemed like the bride emily was against the stripper because her um husband yeah. to be chris would be like no way yeah um so actually <laughs> more on that later but i i don't know i thought that the whole weekend was really odd it was a bunch of things that i would not have done Botox being one of them, um, which I still to this minute, I don't understand that. Um, What did you think of the weekend? Well, I thought that it was interesting to see that like a party canceled. So then they had to like last minute try to find one. I don't know why they were so desperate trying to find one. But that just threw me a little. I just feel like they were like, we need to find one. Well, when you're $40,000 in debt. So I get it. (laughs) But then, yes, JJ came in all up on his high horse. He knew what he was. He get. knew the good deed he was doing. So he found this yeah. girl that he knew in Nashville who wanted a bachelor party. Yeah, he so, knew I mean, Jessica, party. I guess. Yeah. I think. So then. Or and maybe I he liked, knew Emily. I don't know. I liked this episode because you got to see. I know this is not what they normally do, but like you got to see Nicole like go to the house because she doesn't really make house calls. Like meet with the maid of honor, meet with yeah. the bride. Got to see like what she wanted. So that was nice because I felt like we saw a little bit more of like what they do. If that was 
it in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a consultation kind of. It, it makes it seem more like a legitimate business. Yeah, no, you know? totally. I don't know. I, I thought that the pace of this, it seemed like things were moving slower, but they still accomplished everything that they wanted to get done. Mm -hmm. I did think that this episode was a little bit weird with it focusing maybe to compensate for the lack of activities and the last minute-ness of the bachelorette party with the juice cleanse on the side and like the bet. I didn't really get that. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean... I am not with the times and I am with Liz on the fact that I would never, ever want to do a juice cleanse ever, ever. Let me say that one more time. (laughs) I'm never doing a juice cleanse. I love a good, actually, I don't really drink juice. So (laughs) So like, I love a good juice. I love a good juice. No, I'm just thinking I, I, one time in my entire life, I had the best watermelon juice I've ever had. It was sublime, but I don't know. Other than that. I didn't get the juice cleanse. No, I, mean, I think they were just trying to like have us connect with the with the whole employees. But yeah, I didn't get it. That is what it is. I, what did you think of the disco theme that the the bride chose? I didn't see it in the decorations. It was there was a disco ball and there was a lot of like flashiness. Mm. Um, I felt like it was more of a red carpet theme because everywhere they went, there was a red carpet. Um, but they said, or the bride said, you know, we are red carpet on a beer budget. So she said food was less important Mm -hmm. and that high end liquor was more important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. I can dig. But so I didn't really see, I don't even think I saw food. No, there were definitely drinks in hand. I'm sorry. Like the majority of this episode seemed to focus around the Botox. And I don't know how you feel about that. Well, Botox and a low budget just do not mix at all. To me, that was just a red flag. Because I was like, if you want to do Botox, okay, whatever. Do you, boo. But (laughs) I'm not going to do it if I have a low budget. Because I'm not going to end up on botched. Thank you. I Robbie was like, we're going to have to find, or I, Nicole initially said, we'll try to like find a deal. Mm-hmm. You don't want to find a deal when you're getting plastic surgery. No. That is your face. And what I don't understand is after the uh, Botox, they went and had a photo shoot. It, she was you fresh. get No, because when you get Botox, you cannot move your face. Well. So I don't know what kind of fast acting Botox this was. I am like Robbie. I know nothing about Botox. But it, she was living for her life. She, she was, was so happy. She was so happy. <laughs> and I think that just made me happy. Yeah. She was loving. Like, she didn't care. She was getting needles in her face. She was smiling through it. She wasn't it. crying she or was anything. She was so excited. And I did, I thought their activities, that, the Botox being one, and then the photo shoot that also JJ, shout out to, he was feeling himself probably this week. JJ decided to put yeah. a photo shoot together, which I'm like, dude, that's what you should, should do, do every week for them. That's like, your job. You take photos. Gussying up all the girls, getting their makeup do- makeup and they, hair done. That's so fun it. and amazing memories. Like, it, I feel like that would be really cute if you had a photo booth every time or just, I don't know. I feel like JJ's so often just seen in the corner in the club just taking pictures in the club. Um, <laughs> I'm so weird. But I did not like JJ acting all elite and being like, Nicole, Liz, where are you? Yes. JJ, are you for real? And I'm sure he got so much heat for this. Dude, when have you ever showed up on time yeah. for anything? And his whole reasoning was, but there were clients. Mm-hmm. Clients or not, you're still working a job. Right. And you need to be professional at all times. Mm-hmm. It, that's my take. I don't think that it was valid for JJ to get upset at all. But, you know, the photo turned out well. They gave it to the bride and her yeah. party at the that end, was which was really was sweet. I like when they do little stuff like that. We totally forgot to talk about the butler at the beginning. The, what was it called? <sighs> the, the butler, butler in, in the, the buff. buff. That's like a, that sounds like a, um, an episode of like a criminal show or something. I don't know what that was. Was 
living for that moment when it was just Rachel in the apartment and she was so uncomfortable because she was I thought she was gonna start crying she knew she was so awkward she knew the butler was coming and then the butler finally came so uncomfortable then JJ's there but then Rachel leaves JJ with this half naked dude and it's just like JJ (laughs) the butler and his camera (laughs) it was really JJ the butt and then the the <laughs> tacos, like, at one point. But actually, the tacos were coming from the girls. My favorite part was when JJ had to go around the <laughs> butler's backside and, like, tighten the bow tie. I was, I think a tear shed, was shed. Yeah. Um, I was laughing so hard. I can't imagine being in that situation. Kudos to you, JJ, really taking one for the team. Mm-hmm. Um, but then all the girls came back in and... The best part is when the girls when realize she, you know, he's <laughs> chapless, basically. Emily's, her facial expressions were so funny. The bride, yeah. she was great. She, I think she, like, secretly loves it, but, like, yeah. knows that that's not what her now husband wanted. So <laughs> I thought that was, that was all they were going to get until we got to the end. And there was more to come, which I think was totally for Jessica. I thought the beginning was still, like, a little bit tasteful, right? I thought that it was interesting because Batch Weekend said, you know, we don't actually provide that service normally. Like, Mm -hmm. we don't have – we talked about this in the last episode. Maybe they have a contract with a limo service or hotels Mm -hmm. in the state state of Tennessee, but they don't with a stripper – stripping company stripping (laughs) stripping company stripping company so um i was really surprised that they were able to you know nicole was able to pull that out of her bag maybe with her own personal experience but i was not expecting what came later at all and i did not like it no i did not like it at all and what's to come we are going to tell you after we give you a little sweet message for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great throw, Sarah. Hey, After Buzzers, our network produces after shows for nearly all your favorite TV shows. From dramas, reality TV, sci-fi, and more, there is no network that works harder to share, uh, to serve television fans. So hit the subscribe button now for this channel and check out our other YouTube pages as well. Let us know you did so in the comments and we'll thank you on air. But for now, thanks for making us the ESPN of TV talk. Thank you so much, guys. Subscribe, comment. We love to hear from you. Listen to us on the podcast. Best fans. Best in the world. So they had the Botox. They did the photo shoot. shoot. And then basically they just went to different bars, Mm -hmm. I feel like. Which I don't know if they've ever been to since we said before they live in Nashville, but it seemed like they had a great time. Again, Emily on her last night. What? Yeah. Her name oh, no. Was. It was the first night. It was the first night. She was so, stumbling so hard. Oh, yes. Stumbling so hard. And it was a throwback to like the premiere episode yeah. with that, that craziness. But at least no one ran away. Like they were tame. Oh, she was, she was walking very fast. And yeah. Another gem moment what? was when. <laughs> Did you? It was like a split second on camera, so you had to really notice it. But um, Emily and her batches get back to the house or the hotel, and she tries to open the door and just completely takes a tumble. I didn't see it. Oh I my so much. goodness! It was so brilliant. And the there was like a batch holding mm. her, and they were both basically like sideways. Um, That's funny. But I feel like they had they had two really good nights. They had that night, and then Mm -hmm. they had their last night where Emily was head to toe disco attire. Like she felt like Britney Spears. I know jumpsuit. They also that's what I remember the red carpet coming out of the car. It was at many. They had Mm -hmm. it at the um, when they got there. They had it uh, like at the hotel. They had it at the photo shoot, and I wasn't really getting it. But straight up with that blonde hair, she looked like a two thousand. And five, Britney Spears. Yeah, I know. She looked good, Emily. And then <laughs> I, they had, seemed to be having a good time. They the went to drinks, a rooftop. Yeah, the drinks were going. They were sitting outside. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Then, oh my God. Jessica, her maid of honor, got arrested. Or was about to get arrested. Okay. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. There it is. Um... I thought, Jessica, I'll give it to you. Pretty good acting, not going to lie. All right. I Caroline was doesn't think not so. <laughs> pleased with this. 
I watch way too many crime shows okay. to know that the way the police officer was behaving, there is something awry. I was like, there is no way a police officer on camera would grab a woman like that. I don't get his his getup didn't really look normal because it just said <laughs> police on the top of the hat. I was like doing some investigative journalism. Um, I didn't like the fact that he was like, and who are you? And who are you? And what is your opinion? And why are you talking? Well, it all made sense when he was like, well, if you're the bride, I know. Let me give you a little show. That was amazing. <laughs> and how they described it. It was a stripper, if you guys were wondering. Oh, yeah. If you didn't catch on, it was a stripper. And her face, Emily's face went from terror. Like, she knew that Chris, her fiancé, didn't want this. And she was like, oh, my gosh. I thought and we already she, had She the... went like this. She was like, my hands are not touching. My hands are not touching. It goes from that to her, like, pure excitement. And she's, like, smacking him. And then she's, like, on him, you know? No, like, no. She wasn't that bad. She only made it rain with pretend money. And so then I, I think it got a little... But then it definitely got a little yeah. PG-13. She smacked him with um, the, the... The whip. No, it, it's not a whip. It's like a... It's a bar that policemen carry. Oh, I don't know what it's called. It's baton? like a crowbar. Oh, crowbar. <laughs> oh, that's I think. hard. It was a plastic one. I it's know, not but I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, my God. I did not like that part at all. No. And I'm wondering if the Batch Weekend people knew that was happening. I would love I, to know that. It looked... Um, from their faces, I would have to say I'm not sure about that because they seemed a little shocked. Liz, they kind panned of. to Liz and she looked really shocked, but other people were just like, okay, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And also, I feel like they must have, the other bachelorettes must have known, like they had known they were going to Botox, but the bride didn't. I still don't understand that, but they must have known the stripper was coming because if my friend was about to get arrested... I would not be that calm, nor would the, and this was Emily, the bride, go up to the police. I need you to calm down, sir. Like, you can't that say that amazing. to a police officer. She stop, was so sir. good. But she was so, like, chill, and she was a true homie showing up for her friend. Yeah. I think they had a great weekend. Emily should be really excited. No wonder. I mean, and they it was got. last minute. I know. They got five stars, which Robbie was super excited about. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't have expected anything less from them. They seemed really sweet and really nice. Mm-hmm. I mean, Nicole was like, I'm really sad. I can't hang out with them more. I was like, dude, get your own friends. Sorry. That's a little <laughs> bit. Bri- that's a little bit. What did you think, though, about when they were having their meeting at the end, like they Mm -hmm. always do, and JJ had the cojones to call out Nicole like that, saying that she wasn't on time in front of Robbie, though. Do you think it was to, like, help him? If you've been watching Bachelorette Recap (laughs) by us on After Buzz, you know I have very strong opinions, and uh, I thought that was absolutely unnecessary uncalled for super rude super petty super below the belt sorry man not here for it don't like that I think it's just it's only creating more conflict Mm -hmm. if you have a problem with somebody like first try to work it out with just the two of you then take it to your boss don't just show the person Mm -hmm. or basically throw the person out to dry um I think I just used two different metaphors (laughs) Basically, don't throw somebody under the bus in front of your entire company. Like, that just no, doesn't, true. That doesn't make sense. To I totally me. thought they nipped it in the butt when they talked about it. And they were like, dude, come on, calm down. We're just trying to show you what you do. And then he just had to bring it up. I think he did it to look good in front of Robbie. But it's like, okay, whatever. Did you also notice? I don't, yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> it kind of was like really fast. But Rachel had a little moment to shine when she was saying that they need to dress up. Which... Me, personally, I was like, yes, Rachel, I do agree with you. And that was when Nicole, so that's why I don't feel bad for, you know, telling Nicole to get new friends. She made a rude comment to Rachel. She was like, sorry, I don't look like I'm going to Sunday brunch or my Sunday best. Yeah, And I'm like, look, at least she looks professional. No, it's true. Where she was wearing the lumberjack (laughs) shirt. She was like, did you sleep with like a lumberjack or something? She said an oversized lumberjack. That's hilarious. It's like, I get it. They have a very (laughs) calm comfy work environment which is great awesome but i do Mm -hmm. think when they're in front of the people that give them money for what they're supposed to do they should look approachable and like 
Sometimes I've noticed Liz wears a blazer. Yeah. And like Nicole, so Nicole didn't look a hundred the morning of Sunday morning when Ed, all the festivities mm-hmm. were done. But she like looked nice when they, when first, they were going out yeah. and stuff. So it kind of like you got to maintain mm-hmm. an equilibrium of just cons- or be consistent because it was like plummet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> super, super plummet. So then at the table, they obviously talked about the bonus like they do every mm-hmm. week. Did you ha- did you assume mm-hmm. it was going to be who it was or did you have someone else in mind? I just, I felt like they were setting up from last week to this week who it was going to be. So I just, yeah, I, I knew it was going to be who won. Did you? Yeah. It's because JJ. they, yeah. JJ. JJ, you know. Congrats, because you finally won yeah. the bonus you've been boasting about. And I mean, if anything, just know that if you just put that little bit of effort in with the photo shoots and stuff, you'd probably get it more often. I just thought he, you know. I'm anti-bonus, so I'm just anti this whole, like, I'm surprised. Situation. Because Robbie finally came out and told his employees about the debt that he's in. I was expecting more of like a oh, well, here's the bonus back. No, I'm just kidding. Not that. I'm just saying a more of like... A reaction? Yeah. I just feel like they they were just like, so we got to work harder or like we need to... Liz was like, well, what does this mean for my future and my career? JJ was like, I'm really glad you shared this information with us. JJ, you knew about this weeks ago when you had your little private lunch. Mm -hmm. I, speaking of like what's to come and, you know, everything... I would be interested to see if this is a conversation that is revealed later to the mm-hmm. girls that he already knew JJ, the company, was like going downhill because right. yeah. Robbie told him. I don't know. Oh, good point. Well, since we're going into that, then we'll just talk about predictions now. Hmm. Ooh. Well, and now you're after both. It just <laughs> hits ya. It hits ya. <laughs> What, do you, what are your predictions for next week? I, I don't, I'm going to say I feel like maybe we might have another bad weekend where I'm just going to put it out there since he, since he exposed the debt to the employees, mm-hmm. something is going to happen where money is going to have to be spent that maybe shouldn't have, or mm-hmm. they could have prevented something that they didn't. I just have a feeling okay. that something is going to come to a head, and it and they're going to bring the hammer down. Well, we saw in the preview <laughs> that Rachel got a little emotional. She mm-hmm. was like, I am always here for you, and you guys didn't help me, so I'm wondering what that's about. Sure. I think that I'm just recalling what... Um, the initial episode and really the tra- the little sneak peeks at the end of each episode have shown us this far. And I remember at one point, I think Nicole or Liz said to the other, you know, I'm looking for another job. So maybe Batch Weekend is going out of business. I don't know. I don't know. We should bring up that yes. um, the show has changed tape times or air times. So yes. it's now airing. Um, Pacific time at 10.30 p.m. So we don't know what this means in terms of our after shows, unfortunately, just because our studio has crazy studio um, or crazy production slots. And I mean, there's just so much going on in After Buzz, which you guys know. So we will keep you updated with um, how we're proceeding in the weeks to come Mm -hmm. with our after show because we know you love Batch Weekend. We love Batch Weekend. We were all surprised to learn... um, the airtime yeah, shifted for sure yeah so if you just stay in contact with us on social media you can know all about <laughs> this goodness that you don't want to miss with caroline and i thank you guys again so much for watching i am your host sarah serio you can follow me at s serio for all the fun and the news yep. yes and you can follow me at caroline j fair thanks sarah for this amazing two-part like yeah episode comment subscribe we love to hear from you so keep it coming thanks guys bye Bye. from executive producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire afterbuzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the afterbuzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions be sure to visit afterbuzztv.com i'm sir richard wentworth and this has been a presentation of afterbuzz tv Bye, see you later.
expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.